Hi folks, welcome back. So, we've made a lot of circuits that sound like this. So we want to start moving towards things that are a little bit more musical. Something more like this. Now, in order to do that, we need a thing called a VCA, a voltage controlled amplifier. So this is a circuit that takes our audio input and it takes a thing we call a control voltage and kind of smushes them together and outputs a signal that sounds like the audio signal, but the shape or the volume of the audio signal is controlled by our control voltage. And so we can take our droney long sounds that we've been using up until now and we can make them sound a bit more musical, like notes. And this is also a great place for us to start to move forward from our simple but fun and easy CMOS circuits and just dip our toes in with a really simple transistor circuit, which is what we're going to do today. Okay, so let's talk about transistors. This is the circuit symbol for a transistor. This is what most people think of when you say transistor. This is a certain type of transistor. It's a bipolar junction transistor, a BJT. Now I'm doing a whole series where I go over each electronic component individually and go into all the science about how it works. So I'm not gonna go really in depth about how the transistor works today. That's for another video. But what we are gonna do is we're just gonna dip our toes in and see how we can make a really simple VCA with just this one transistor. So what we need to know, essentially how a transistor works is it's got three terminals, as you can see, the collector, the base, and the emitter. And to put it very simply, how the BJT works is that we put a positive voltage between the base and the emitter, you'll often see this written as VBE, and that means the voltage between the base and the emitter, and we generally want that to be about 0.6 volts or higher. Now, the higher we go above 0.6 volts, the more we turn on the transistor, and a turned on transistor essentially allows current to flow from the collector to the emitter. And this little arrow here means that this is an NPN transistor. What that essentially means, we've got NPN, that's how the polarity of it is, and that's what this arrow means, is that we've got positive to negative. So we've got conventional current flowing this way, and that turns the transistor on, and that will allow conventional current to flow from here to here. So we can essentially think of the transistor, in this case, as a voltage controlled switch. And so that's essentially how we're gonna use our transistor today. We're gonna to use our control voltage to turn the transistor on and to allow a current to flow through the transistor only when our control voltage is on. And so that's gonna let the audio pass in the shape of the control voltage because as you'll see in a minute, the transistor doesn't turn on and off instantly. So this is how we're gonna apply our control voltage. So I'm going to have a switch that's going to connect this 9 volts to the top of this capacitor. So watch my capacitors under constant voltage video if you want to know more about how this works. But because we're essentially connecting the capacitor through a zero resistance, it's going to charge up basically instantly. So the voltage across this capacitor, when I throw the switch, it'll just be one of those momentary toggle switches. So as soon as I let it go, it will come off. So the voltage at this point here will rise instantly up to 9 volts because we're charging it through basically zero resistance. So when this is charged up to 9 volts, what's happening at the transistor? Well, at the moment, it's we can consider this point here to be at ground for now. So this point is zero volts. And to turn the transistor on, the base needs to be about 0.6 volts higher than the emitter. So as soon as this goes up to 9 volts, this is going to turn the transistor on. OK. So now the capacitor is going to drain through these two resistors here. Is so I'm going to have this resistor here at 100k, and this is going to be our decay pot. And so now, because I don't want this resistor, we need this resistor here, but we need it to be much bigger than this resistor, so that the parallel combination of these two resistors always looks like this one. So a nice rule of thumb is two resistors in parallel, if you make one of them ten times bigger than the other, the parallel combination will always look like the smaller one. That will give you the parallel impedance. Try that out and see what the value is. It's essentially 100k and the smaller this gets, the more and more the parallel Im impedance just looks like this resistor. So we can essentially say this is our decay pot. And if you watch my capacitors under constant voltage, you'll understand why. The value of the capacitor times the resistor is what sets the time that this voltage takes to drain to zero. So this is going to exponentially decay down towards zero. And so this transistor is gonna be on until this gets below 
about 0.6 volts. And that's why we need this resistor here. Because without this big resistor, you'd have 9 volts across this transistor, which would not be good. Loads of current would flow and it might damage the transistor. So the transistor, you can essentially think of the base emitter junction, which, we call, which is what we call this thingy here, as a diode. And so what we know about diodes is that diodes can change their resistance to maintain a voltage across them. So this base emitter junction always wants to have 0.6 volts across it, and it will try its very best to do that. So if we have a nice big resistance here, then that means that not too much current is going to flow through here. This is able to maintain its voltage at 0.6 volts. The rest of the voltage gets dropped across here. So this will start at 8.4 volts and it will go down and down and down and down and down and down until it gets to zero volts here and the transistor will turn off, shutting off this part and stopping our VCA. Okay, so what we've learned so far about transistors, we want about 0.6 volts across here to turn the transistor on. And then this will just magically do whatever to let a current flow. Well, there's one little thing that we need to bear in mind. So like we've got a diode here, we've also kind of got another diode here. You can see there's a P to an N and there's a P to an N. Don't worry if you don't understand at the moment. Essentially what we need to remember is we need to keep this diode reverse biased. So basically the base needs to be higher than the emitter and the collector needs to be higher than the base. We've got 0.6 volts at the base, so we need to make sure the collector stays higher than that. So let's try and keep the collector above about a volt. So how we're going to do that is we're going to apply our audio signal up here. So let's say for now, this is the output of one of our 4106 oscillators. So this is going to be going between 0 and 9 volts, 0, 9 volts, 0, 9 volts. I'm going to divide this down in a ratio of about 1 to 4. So if you imagine our output, the average value of it is about 4.5 volts. And so if we divide that by about five, then we're going to have about, very roughly, a volt. So if I say, let's have 47 ohms here and 2.2k here, so that there's always about a volt here, which obeys our criterion of staying a bit above this. You know, I'm being very loosey-goosey with this at the moment. So what happens then is when our control signal goes high, during this period, we get current flowing down like this. So these two things are now in parallel. So what we've now got down here is we've got a current output at the bottom of our transistor. This is quite common actually with transistors. Normally transistors are kind of taught as a voltage amplifier, but transistors are actually very commonly used as a thing called a current source, which we'll go into in a future video. So we're taking a current output here. What we're going to do for that is we're going to use a new type of op-amp configuration that we've not seen before called a current to voltage converter. So go and watch my op amps and active filter design video if you want to know more about op amps. Um, but to, the takeaway of this is when you have an op amp with negative feedback, which we do here because we're going into the inverting input, the op amp will try and make these two inputs the same. And this one is at ground. So the op amp is going to make sure that this input is always at ground. So we don't have some weird floating emitter that could be some random value but it's at ground because one of the problems is if we kind of put a resistor here, then we're going to get a thing called negative feedback because as we, re as we put current through that resistor, then there's going to develop a voltage across that resistor and then that's going to turn this off because if this is at 0 0.6 volts and this voltage at the emitter starts to rise, then our transistor is going to switch off. So we've got, we use this transistor magic at this point to hold this point at ground with our virtual ground it's called go and watch my op amp video if you want to know more and then what essentially happens is the current flows through here it can't go into this terminal because of my golden rule number two um, so what it does is it comes up and across this resistor and it drops its voltage across this resistor so we get an output here it's an inverted output but it looks just like this audio signal here and what if we don't want an output that looks like this well we can simply just capacitively decouple this output. If we just stick a nice big capacitor on the end here, then we'll get an output that's centered around ground. And then that can be passed off into the rest of our system. And we've got ourselves a nice, very straightforward VCA. So let's go over this again. We've got a control voltage that comes in here. This is our decay pot, which controls the speed at which our 
control signal falls, press this switch, we get a burst of signal that decays away, that turns our transistor on, which allows current to flow from our audio input through the transistor to our current to voltage converter, where we take a nice low impedance output that we could pass on to a buffer, or we could pass on to another op-amp stage. If we, want, if we don't want this, if we want to re-invert it, we can go into another inverting op-amp, or a buffer, or a filter, or whatever we want to do. And yeah, this works great. So let's go upstairs and have a look at how it works on the board. First thing I'm going to build up is just that control voltage. So I've got the capacitor going down to around, got a little switch, and then I'm going to connect one side of the switch to the positive voltage. So this is the blue scope trace. Put a voltage on there, you can see it just goes up and then it's not going down because there's no resistance for it to drain down. So we're going to take a 100k potentiometer and connect the middle lug down to ground. So now when I press the button, there we go, you see this blue trace, let me zoom out a little bit. And there we go. So that's our control voltage signal. So let's put our transistor in first. Okay, so here's the transistor. If you have the flat side facing this way, Collect, collector, base, emitter. And so the pot was here, it was getting in the way, but I will put it back. So we're going to go from the top of this capacitor to the base of the transistor. I'm using a one meg. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up that biasing network that we had on the collector. Audio signal goes into the 2.2K and then from the collector we have 47. Okay, and then that goes down to ground. So that, then we put our audio in into our biasing network and now we need to take this output current remember and we're going to pass it into that current to voltage op amp so I'm just going to use a jumper and go from the emitter to the inverting input of an op amp which has I've just got a 1k resistor from the output to the inverting input and the non-inverting input is tied to ground so that's just going to turn the current into a, a voltage that looks like the current yellow trace and you can see that because it's inverting, it goes below ground. And you can see you've got a nice square wave there. And now if I use, instead of my CMOS input, if I just use an ordinary sine wave, I'm just generating this from my function generator, just to prove to you that this will work with any signal. So, and so here it is with a pure sine. So you can hear there's a little bit of distortion when it turns off. Just as it fades out, there's that little bit of distortion. That's okay. Sounds great. And so there we have it, the simplest of VCAs. This is really just a very, very simple introduction to transistors. Transistors can get very hairy and very complicated very quickly, but we're just going to take it step by step like we have been, and I'm going to show you that transistors are easy. Hi folks, so while I was making this video, we crossed a thousand subscribers on YouTube and I just wanted to tack this little bit on the video just to say thank you to everyone for all their support, all of your positive messages, all of your constructive criticism that you've been giving me on YouTube and on Reddit in places, uh, suggestions for videos and just generally awesomeness and subscribing and watching and liking. It has really been incredible for me. I didn't think that we'd get to this point for months. I put my first video public about six weeks ago and we've already got a thousand subscribers so I'm so grateful to everybody who's watched and liked and commented and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so thank you all and I'm going to take this as an opportunity to let you all know that I'm going to launch a Patreon. So if you want to support me, if you want to keep these videos going then please come and support me on Patreon. I'll be adding little bits on there that I couldn't fit into videos either for time or because it wasn't quite relevant and doing live streams and bonus little schematics and things like that so your support will be greatly appreciated and i'm really looking forward to building a community with you guys so thank you all okay folks so thanks for watching come back next time we're going to use this vca to make ourselves some nice percussive drum sounds